Hello there and welcome back to another paint along style episode. So this week's episode will be paint along style. So that is, it's going to be a little bit longer than your usual YouTube video. So go ahead and get your sketchbook out, your crayons, your pastels, your oil paints or your acrylics and draw or paint along with me now. The photo reference of Irene there in the top left corner of your screen will be available um, for you to click on and uh, save on my Facebook photo reference group. A link to that and all of the things that I mentioned in this episode will be in the description box down below. So I'm starting off with a little bit of burnt umber and a bristle brush just to get the initial block in and check. And remember, paint along style. So that means I am going to show you all of the footage and that means that I'm going to be painting in real time and talking. So that means that this is not going to be a photo realistic image. So don't expect this to be a perfectly photographic finished painting by any means. And that's not really what I'm after with most of my paintings anyway. And if you're interested in photo realistic paintings, that's, that's cool. That's up to you. It's just not my cup of tea. Now just getting the simple placement in, that's something you can do with just a few lines just like that. And the uh, cotton canvas here has been toned about 20 minutes ago, um, or actually probably a little longer than that with the way that the uh, canvas is behaving with this brush. So odorless mineral spirits and burnt umber and just a brush. And I also did kind of, um, rub the paint in a little bit more with the uh, microfiber cloth. This is just your, your regular old microfiber cloth. So depending on how, how you time it, uh, usually about 20 minutes is good. It allows the paint to flow a little bit and at the same time, you know, it still is uh, adhering the paint to the, uh, the canvas. All right, so now I'm just going to look at the outside shape of the face. And the trick is to use simple straight lines and angles to simplify the immense complexity of the forms. Now, uh, with this paint along style video, um, if you're new to this channel, there will be times where I won't speak as much. So I'll just be painting. That's why I invite you to get your sketchbook out, draw or paint along with me. You don't even have to be painting the same image. You have um, a commission portrait or something you're working on in your studio or in your home. Consider me your, your studio friend. I'm just hanging out and painting portraits or painting landscapes or still life or whatever. Now, I'm much more concerned right now about the main triangle. So basically point one, point two, point three, that creates a triangle. And I'm using a larger brush this is a, uh, actually this is a size six. Let's adjust the autofocus. This is a size six Filbert bristle brush. And I don't want the drawing to be completely perfect. Now, if I were to do a drawing with the intent of transfer, for those of you that are currently taking my portrait drawing or portrait painting class, and just in case you're, you're watching this, um, when I do an umber sketch such as this for an ala prima style painting, uh, like what we're doing today, my aim is not really to draw perfectly with the burnt umber, um, but rather uh, draw just enough so that I can go in and figure out the rest. 
with the color. It is multitasking and it does make drawing a little bit more difficult, but it kind of accelerates the rate at which you can paint. Now I'm very cautious with the angle of the nose. Somewhat like that. So I have uh, had a little more bravery this week and uh, I've been looking at some of the uh, the comments and the questions. It seems that the last video, the one that I uploaded, uh, which was the uh, live stream, Patreon live stream uh, footage, it didn't do so well. I wonder if it was the uh, notifications, just because that video was actually created a week before it was uploaded. So, um, you know, if you want to be receiving updates for these videos, uh, go ahead and check out if you're subscribed to my YouTube channel. And um, there's a thing that everyone talks about called a bell icon. So it's the thingy that uh, notifies when I upload. I usually upload around 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, usually. But lately, with computer troubles that I've been having, uh, it's, it, it varies. Let's just say that. Now notice how I don't even have a, a hint for the mouth just yet. So that is to show you exactly how much I'm prioritizing the main triangle. So you know this um, demonstration is also going to kind of double as a portrait study for me uh, for another painting because um, this is an ongoing pose that's going on in my friend Karen Warshall's studio in Baltimore. I already did a drawing study completely from life um, this Monday. Now I intend to do a larger painting of her. And usually before I'll do a larger painting, I prefer to first draw and then do a couple oil studies, oil painting studies. So this ought to serve for a good uh, study for the eventual painting that I'll create. And if you want to receive updates on the studio paintings that I create uh, that are much more you know, realistic than these, I would check out my Instagram. That's where you'll see my studio work. I also post there more frequently than um, YouTube. It's much easier to contact me there too. All right, let's just get a clean brush. So that one seems to be misbehaving. And if all else fails, then I'll just probably just jump right into a flesh color. Okay, that's helping a little bit. So I wanted to push the shape for the nose down a little. Now the angle.
Now I read a comment of somebody uh, saying that they were they were um, happy that I started talking about the awkward stage in painting. So yeah, I mean the awkward stage is, is something that happens. It's normal. It usually happens uh, more, I would say, in portrait painting, just because we're so used to seeing. Uh, we're not used to seeing unfinished faces, right? So it, it makes it a little bit psychologically difficult to see an image of a human face that is incomplete. So that's what can create the uh, the awkward stage. If you want to avoid too much of a heavy awkward stage, it is avoidable. Um, and I would say stick with lines, stick with a linear drawing. So what I'm doing here, I'm sticking with just lines though. This is two tones right now. But I typically will stick with line for a long time. Now I have to maneuver around the camera, so that's why my arm is kind of in an awkward position there. There we go. Here's a challenge. Um, count how many times I'll say the word awkward in this video. I feel like I'm probably going to say that a lot. Okay, so I had to move the chin up a little bit. So uh, if you're still listening there, this is the trick with portrait painting and in particular with Alla Prima painting. Be patient with this stage with the block-in stage. This is the block-in stage. You're blocking in simple shapes of light and dark. The more patience you have with this stage, the better your results will be. And by better, I don't mean photographic. I just mean um, something that is convincing. Something that has depth. That's all. I'm going to sit back. Now I prefer to work standing usually, but I'm sitting. Now that angle is a little bit off, needs to be a little more straight. That shape needs to be a little bigger. And feel free to turn this video into a time lapse too. YouTube gives you that option. You can watch videos at, I don't know, something some multiple times the rate of speed of the video i just don't like to upload time lapses really uh, just because i don't see how that would help you i'm sure i can but i want to make videos that can help others Yes, I know. Um, this shadow can be kind of uh, uneasy whenever you have an overhead shadow. I, you know why this is not 
you know I, I don't want this, right? <laughs> of course you do. Um, but this is just kind of inevitable. It'll make more sense when I paint the actual shadow color. You know what I'm going to do when I get to it? Uh, this is I'm going to do something like, let me show you, something like this. I'm going to minimize this shadow. Now in nature, and especially in the photograph, that shadow is really dark and it's really, it's not in the best position and that's just because the light, there's nothing we can do about it. That's just because it's an overhead light, natural light to be more exact. Natural light being a window, window light. But for now, let's just draw it and paint it as we see it. Just letting you know I'm aware of that. You should be aware of this shape too when you're working. Another area to be very careful of is this, especially in a younger model, like um, our model here, Irene. You wanna be very cautious with this little plane there. Let's not forget there's a little bit of her hair under here. Now eventually I'll go over the dark, these darks here, the burnt umber, with, um, with the true color. Maybe that'll be one of the first things I do. And another little tip here is to watch out for 90 degrees. So if I wasn't conscientious about this, I would kind of, in a trivial sense, make this 90, 90 degree, but um, it's not. This is, the bottom of her chin is actually a little more straight. If anything, it's more angled like this than I had described it. So watch out with 90 degrees. Even in nature, I don't really think that that will show up much in landscape. And then the uh, neck is not straight down, it's actually angled, which adds more harmony to these shapes. So this is very much an abstraction from nature, but it's a useful abstraction in a way. So it's abstraction with a purpose. It helps to place everything down in a way that is convincing. So it's not abstraction just for the sake of creating something abstract. It's abstraction with a purpose. And I find that drawing with this larger brush actually it helps a lot. I can move much more quickly um, than with the smaller brush. And then some of you are like, I told you so. <laughs> I, I read that in some of the comments about uh, draw, using a larger brush for this. So yeah, I, I can see how that works. I can see how that works. And when you're using bristle brushes, you want to have a really good quality bristle brush. Um, this is a Robert Simmons brush. That is my favorite type of brush. Now, I've received lots of questions on the Rosemary brand 
and uh, I just haven't I haven't purchased it so I don't really know but I can tell you from bristle brushes and from other artists that have told me uh, for bristle brushes Robert Simmons is the way to go and no I'm not sponsored by them I would like to be though but I'm not All right, now what do you say we get into some of the flesh tones? So I'm going to use the uh, palette knife here. Good old palette knife to clean off the glass a little bit. The nice thing about palette knife is it's super easy to clean. Just paper towel, you're done. So I'm going to blur my eyes at the model and try to look around here, around the half tones, um, these particular half tones. Um, and I'm seeing kind of, uh, I don't want to say orangey, I think it's leaning towards the yellow pinkish with a slight bit of orangey with the average flesh tone. So um, I'm going to go ahead and mix that up. Let's start off with yellow ochre. So I'm going to mix a base flesh tone. So I'm approaching this a little bit differently from the usual. Uh, the usual approach, I'll usually go ahead and mix a color value or a web right away. Uh, but I'm going to mix a base flesh tone first. So what did I do here? I used a little bit of the yellow ochre cadmium red to give me like a kind of middle orange. Sorry about the bounciness of the uh, easel, but what can you do? A little bit of a alizarin. Now let's use the titanium white. A little more titanium white. And one question I usually get is uh, what do you do with the paints after you're done? And uh, what I do is I just, with the palette knife, just remove the paint, whatever is still wet, from the uh, surface of the glass. And then I'll just put it in a plastic container and then put that plastic container in the freezer and it preserves the paint. Some of these paints are rather old. I don't think it really affects the quality of the paint that much, if any. So this on its own is a little too warm. Uh, it probably will work for a half tone around here, uh, but I want an average color, so that would be a little too warm. Uh, I think I'll go with white to cool it down. So white to cool it down. One of my students um, was actually, she said she really wanted to paint um, at home, but she was concerned with the fumes and the toxicity of the fumes. So a few of if you're like that too, if you're afraid of the toxicity of the fumes uh, and you've never heard of Spike Lavender, I would check out Spike Lavender oil. Um, it's a, you can use it to replace your odorless mineral spirits. It's a little more pricey, but it's uh, allegedly it's not as toxic. The fumes aren't as toxic. So... I would check that out. You can also check out, uh, there are other alternatives like citrus, citrus essence. I used that before. So I'm making it a little bit more pink. It's a little too in the orangey realm. And I wanna mix enough paint. So see how this is kind of equivalent to one of these little puddles of paint. I wanna have enough so I can draw with it. And I'll show you what I mean by drawing with it. This is a new technique that I've been kind of developing for Alla Prima just to make it go a little faster and make it a little easier to understand because I know uh, flesh color can be quite daunting. This portrait. Okay, that seems about all right. So now what I'm going to do, uh, try to save as much of that paint as possible. So try to take as much off the palette knife. And then remember, you can clean your palette knife very easily, like that. 
Okay, so now let's get a different brush. This is the one I was using to move the nose down a little bit before. So with this brush, what I'm going to do is now just cover the lights and at the same time, see how I'm covering the lights. At the same time, I'm going to try and make the light and shadow shape a little bit more precise. And there's no medium just yet. Uh, the medium that I'll be using this time is um, the, the medium I've been using for most of my videos called Neo McGilp. And I'll link that for you in the description box down below. But no medium yet. I'll let you know when I use medium. So see how already I'm starting to draw a little bit more with this color. So just the bristle brush, Robert Simmons. Let's go ahead and promise you I'm not sponsored by them. I wish I was. Robert Simmons, there you go. You know exactly what brush this is. Because the brush you use for this uh, is very important. When we get to synthetics, it won't be as important. At least in my opinion. So I'm applying less pressure in the areas that are going to eventually be a little darker, such as the globella right there. I had such a fun time with my students. Um, I hope they did too. Um, on on Wednesday, we were we were going over uh, just to give you some context. Today for me is. Uh, what is today? Today is Friday. Uh, so yeah, on Wednesday, I was introducing the structures of the face. So I actually even numbered them. So we had, um, you know, the glabella, this little sweep right here. Uh, this is the frontal region of the skull, the frontal ridge right here. The maxilla, which is right over here. It's this area right over here. And then the cheekbone zygomatic bone. I numbered them and then I was kind of like quizzing them. I hope they're okay with that. So if you're listening, I hope you're okay with that. I, I thought that was fun. And then of course the or orbicularis oris. So the top plane of the orbicularis would be around here somewhere. Just the side of the mouth bottom of the orbicularis oris is right here, a very deep shadow. I also have videos on YouTube about these structures. If you go on my channel and look up planes of the face, I have quite a few of them. Okay, so let's cover here a little bit. A little bit down here. All right, so now the light and shadow is as specific as I can possibly get it, uh, at least with a given time, which is not very much. But in any case, it's as precise as I can take it right now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the palette knife, preserve this color. Definitely, you know, we spent so much time mixing it. I don't want to lose it. So we'll put it right over here and um, refer to it whenever is needed. And we will refer to that color. Clean off the mixing space a little bit with the palette knife. And now we will return to that brush. We're going to mix up our color value web, starting off with this color. 
So the color value web, it'll get lighter up here, closer to the top, a little more of the yellow, a little bit more of the yellow ochre that is. And then as we move towards the middle, it'll be closer to this. And uh, if you're new to this channel, the reason I'm mixing up uh, this color value web is just to have uh, like colors organized a little bit. So now a little bit of uh, cadmium red. I like to use complementaries for middle tones. Now with, with her flesh tones, it's a little closer to the pinkish than the orangish. So I'll lean a little more towards the red, the cadmium red. Now alizarin permanent, sap green. So remember up here was cadmium red, sap green, but more of the cadmium red. And now we're gonna hit about equal parts, uh, alizarin permanent and sap green. And now just burnt umber. And then alizarin ultramarine blue. Remember these colors are listed out for you in the description box down below. A little bit more ultramarine blue. Then ivory black. Then alizarin. And there you go. There's the color value web. The next thing I'm gonna do is uh, with a different brush. Uh, how about we just use the brush that I used to draw with. Uh, no need to clean it or anything. A little bit of the ultramarine blue ivory black, sap green, titanium white, ultramarine blue, sap green, a little bit of yellow ochre. You know, I should probably be doing this with the palette knife because this color is gonna be pretty important too. And it covers a large portion of the painting. Um, so let's see if you can guess what color I'm mixing. So the sap green, ivory black, a little bit more sap green, ivory black, titanium white. So if you're guessing the background, yep, you're right, I'm mixing up the background. Tone, background color, it's going to be very important to kind of offset the flesh tones and uh, give me some color hue, temperature, variation here, which is going to be quite important. And let's just test it out with the palette knife. And I think that's that's about good. So now I'm going to get this color. Hopefully I've mixed enough of it. I don't think I did, but oh well. We'll be fine. So I'll put that color off to the side. And we'll refer to it when necessary. Now I'm going to use a little bit of my medium, Neo McGilt medium. And for Alla Prima, I just use medium to, wow, that was a lot of paint. I use medium to um, help spread the paint much more quickly. See how much more fluid and kind of like buttery the paint is? That's because I use just the tiniest little bit of Neo McGilt medium. It is a gel-like medium, a fast dryer. So that the greenish color that I mixed is much more green than uh, what you saw on the photo reference. Now it's up to you if you wanna make this closer to the color on the photo reference, by all means, you can do so. But uh, I'm good with this color. Now when I get to the side of the face, that's when I'm gonna be a little more cautious. Even have to hold my breath here to try to get that curve. There, something about like that. Though, of course, when I get to the hair, I have to fix that angle. Well, that's okay. So remember, this is abstraction with a purpose. So what I'm doing here 
is again using abstract shapes to help me create something reminiscent of the beauty and harmony and nature. So sometimes you'll see a kind of a painterly trick where a lot of artists do things like this, kind of like dabbing the paint. That creates a nice little effect. So it's not such a uniform uh, flat color for the background. You want to have some, some variance here and there. Yes, I know there's a chair back there, but I don't feel like painting it, so I'm just going to omit the chair. We are painters, we're not human photocopiers. And remember, I said that this is not going to look like a perfectly photographic realistic image. And if that's what you want, you can consult your local printer and it'll do a pretty good job for you. Okay, all right, so now that I have this tone filled in for the background, now I'm going to go ahead and go in for the dark mass of the hair. So changing brushes here. I'm going to want to save the background brush. I hope this brush can still make a decent mark. I don't know what happened to you, uh, fellow, but you got smashed. In my backpack, dang. Well, the bristles are still in good shape, but yeah, that brush kind of took a beating. How about we mix right on the canvas? So, alizarin, and I'm gonna just mix in one spot here. So, alizarin and ivory black. So, alizarin and ivory black. Now with the hair, I'm going to treat it a little differently than the background. I'm going to think of planes with the hair. I didn't think so much about planes with the background. I didn't need them. But now with the hair, some areas are going to be darker. Some areas are going to be lighter. Now for this to work, you want to consider the pressure. So check this out. So a little less pressure like this, we'll make it less dark. And then a little more pressure will inevitably apply more of the paint that we are mixing. And what I'm doing is I'm painting without any medium. So I'm painting very thick. So remember that with oil paint, a thinner paint tends to stick onto thicker paint. So when it comes time to paint all those little curls and nuances in her hair, I will use medium to help the paint stick. But what I want is a foundation that I can build on. A little bit darker over here. Now, of course, I will leave some of the burnt umber uh, wherever um, I feel, just because I think it's neat when you can see the process a little bit, as opposed to just perfectly describing everything. I think that's about good for that. And you know the, oh, this is gonna be a risk, but it's a risk I'm willing to take. The, um, the eye sockets, the concavity of the eye sockets, pretty dark. And that has a lot to do with the lighting. So whatever, let's just go fill this in very dark. I already did here actually. And not much over there, and you know why. All right, now that we have that, Let's go ahead and get the palette knife back. And we're gonna mix another color that covers a large area 
on here. So if you can guess what it is, it's a large area that's still in the burnt umbra. So I'm using a lizarin sap green. My two favorite colors to mix. So I want something that's kind of greenish, so I'm going to use a little bit of yellow ochre. So this is going to be a much darker greenish hue uh, than the background, but it's still going to be a lot cooler than the flesh tones. Might need a little more yellow ochre. So if you're guessing that this is for the shadow tone, then you are correct. This is exactly for the shadow tone. Now I think this is about good. I might be too light. I don't know. Let's see. Just using the palette knife to test a little portion of it. I don't think it's too light. Nah, just to be on the safe side, let's go back to the burnt umber. Oh, just a little bit of burnt umber won't hurt. All right, that's that's about good. So let's put this color off to the side yet again. Uh, let's sneak it all the way down here. And of course, let's get a different brush. I do have quite a lot of brushes here. Okay, so a different brush, still Robert Simmons. And as we're doing this, we can also take a much more uh, precise look at the shape that the shadow makes. So uh, I think it actually curves up here a little bit more, something like that. And it helps to have two brushes at once here uh, when you're working uh, shapes that are right next to each other. So I, after filling that in, I notice I can push the hair back a little more. Switch brushes. So this is one way you can work really fast. I'm going to stand back and yep there needs to be a little bit more dark shape down here than what I had described. It might also be the dark of the chair but like I said I don't feel like painting that chair. And a little less pressure for the bottom of the chin right here. And we're gonna use that for a little bit of a reflected light. So using the umber itself. So we're gonna let the paint do some of the work. Something like that. And now of course the shadow. Oh, this dreaded shadow. Yellow ochre. Like I said, I was going to make it much lighter. And of course that's way too light, so I'm just mixing directly onto the canvas here. Something like that. Then I'll go back in with the flesh tone brush. This is why it helps to have these... Uh, what? <laughs> this is why it helps to have separate brushes. I don't know what happened there. I'll just get another one. This is why it helps to have these colors mixed up. These colors mixed up and brushes, several brushes ready to do some of the work. Okay. So now, I 
think the next area to look at would be the uh, the clothing. So I'm just gonna, well, what brush am I gonna use now? Actually running out of brushes. So I'll get, hmm, oh, whatever. I still have more brushes. I just didn't, didn't feel like cleaning so many brushes, but let's just mix directly onto here. Did I forget to clean this brush? Oh man. So ivory black, titanium white, a little bit of alizarin, a little bit of medium, I guess a lot of medium to get the paint to flow. And now we're covering the clothing. And of course, there's gonna be a little shadow here. So back to the ivory black. Little shadow here. And so now we're gonna to get to some of the stuff that you probably came here to see, which is going to be the, um, the actual modeling of the form. So we'll start off with a nice little mid-tone here. No extra medium on the brush. We have now switched into synthetics. So I'm still painting with um, without any medium yet in the lights. So here's, here's why. So I, I want to have very soft edges. Uh, so essentially blending, but I don't like using the word blending. Uh, essentially all this is doing is it's uh, applying a very soft touch to the paint. And that happens when you paint um, thick paint onto thick paint in the Alla Prima style. And this edge right here is an edge that you don't really don't want to play any games with. The edge for the hairline. So luckily, I have the brush for the hair. I noticed that I had that a little too tall. So now I'm going to put that back down. And move about rather quickly. A little bit of the red. Still in the middle tones. Now you'll see how it's just a few values and it'll start to read like form. And yes, I'm kind of blending a little bit only to make the edges softer between planes, not to create other planes. A little tip there. Don't blend to create tone, just blend to create edge. But it's completely up to you. I usually say, um, you know, I'm never going to tell you don't do this or don't do that, um, but you know, it's just a little word of advice. You want to deliberately create plane. You don't want a plane to just happen just as, you know, some kind of zigzag motion in a particular area. Now let's throw it a little lighter. And a little cooler, something about like that. A 
Or this plane down here. And yes, we can continue to draw the shadow shape. Continue to make this much more specific. So I'll push it a little warmer now. And so the initial tone, remember that thing we mixed up over there? We're now adding all of these onto that. And that's helping create this kind of this flow of colors. I think it's a neat, a neat little trick to Aloe Primo painting. What did I say earlier though? That initial 2D design, the initial uh, just two-tone abstract image is essential. If I didn't spend the due time that I, really, if I didn't spend the time that was due for that, this would have been very, very complicated. Even more complicated than I can imagine, really. So a little darker here. Too dark. Let's move up. And I'm still using the same brush, somehow. I usually switch between brushes by this point, but... Things are just kind of working. I'm going to change the light sensitivity on the camera so you can see a little more, though that kind of amped up the glare too, so that you can see a little more of these values. Okay, that might have been just too much. Let's do this. If you can bear with me. Now one of the nice things about this filming style is that I have a screen right in front of my face so I can see what you're seeing. Or what you will be seeing. So I had to adjust the lighting a little bit on the camera. So you can see the half tones that I'm adding. So now I'm going to kind of move back and forth between these values. I see that I can push this a little darker, but not as dark as that. Let's get a smaller brush out. It's a little cleaner there. So now with the same brush, I'm going to mix black and white. A little bit of medium. Black and white, some flesh tone. Actually a little more white. A little more flesh tone. So black and white and a little bit of flesh tone. Can you guess what I'm about to paint? So if you're guessing the sclera, you are correct. So let's see. Oh, just a tiny touch. For the sclera, the white of the eye, and remember, 
the white of the eye is not white, usually. It's usually some type of half tone. And a little over here. Put a little more than I needed on purpose so that I can go back in with a smaller brush and a thinner application of paint. So I'm using the medium to thin out the paint. I put a little indication there for the eye. Oh, the tiniest little glimpse of the eye over there. Probably almost impossible to see. Just a tiny indication. And a little more over here. And a little bit darker for the eyebrow. So now, of course, we're going to start to get into the features. And I'm trying to paint this in a way that, you know, even a complete beginner, you know, if you're a complete beginner, can follow along. I'm not trying to pull any tricks here. This painting is being created just as you're witnessing it. There are no edits, no changes in the speed of the footage, no games. And my hope is that these videos will help you in your training as an artist. And I also hope I'll be able to, let's face it, I really hope I'll be able to make a living doing this. So hopefully this will continue to, to expand. So with YouTube, it's very difficult. Very difficult. I am thinking of other platforms at the moment, especially to teach online classes. I'm looking into that very much. Okay, now we're going to use the same dark for the nostril and just a brush stroke, hopefully. Nope, a little more than just one brush stroke, but we'll make it look like just one brush stroke. No one needs to know. A little bit more lizard and permanent. And I hope I'm not talking too much throughout the video. I notice I have been talking a lot in the video, but you can always silence me if you like. A little more medium. Like I said, I promised I'd tell you when I use medium. And it's usually when I want to paint a sharper shape, wet onto wet, is when I'll use that medium. Even though I can't really see it in the photo reference, I'm going to change the value. Make it a little more red. A little bit of a greenish tone, same brush. The bottom here. All right.
right, so now I'm going to get a different brush of the same type of brush. A little bit of red. I'm definitely going to have to add some medium. It's a little bit more Neo McGilt medium. Lizard permanent. Titanium white. Let's just try this for now. I want to get the point. I want to get the paint to a very fine point on the brush. Let's see if you can see this. Very fine point on the brush. We're going to draw with this. This is what makes Alaprima so fast and yet so difficult. We can draw and color and adjust value at the same time. That is, we can draw and color in and adjust value at the same time. Now we're going to switch. No, let's use. Let's use this again. Now I wanted to get a little more green, so I'll use the background green. Adjust this little half tone. So it's a greenish half tone, mostly because everything around it's kind of warm. Now I'm going to get a different brush. Let's go to the brighter lights up here and fill the paint up pretty good and proper with this light. Now we don't want the highlights to be just a dot. We want the highlights to have a shape. And I'm purposefully kind of soft softening the edges around these highlight shapes. But I'm not trying to create tones with this little zigzag motion. I'm just trying to soften the edges. Some will be sharper than others. That one will be sharper. And some of these colors will some of these values, I gave it away, will have a little bit of a different color to it. So yellow ochre. See how this one is a little more yellow? So some of these lights will have a different hue. And this is how we can key the, the lights. And by key, I mean just relating, relating these colors to one another. That's all. And at the same time, yes, there's a lot of multitasking here. At the same time, we're making an edge sharper. So this one here. And switch back to this light. A little bit of the highlight region there for the nose. And let's throw in, though we can't see it, at least I can't see it, a little more of a pinkish tint. Just for the sake of color variation there. And then with the same light, The, uh, the yellowish part, put in this highlight.
Now before I forget, I'm going to get a different brush. How about, let's get the one I was toning the canvas with. A little bit of medium. Oh, great. The brush just fell right onto the medium. That's okay. All right, so a little bit of medium. A red. Alizarin. A little bit of white. With a thinner application of paint, we should get these lights to stick. A little more medium. There we go. Just needed more medium. Now if you'll excuse me. A few more brush strokes and then I have to change a battery. So hopefully I can get the camera back in the same place but no guarantees if it'll be exactly in the same spot all right that should be all right for the hair for now now let me go ahead change that battery okay so the battery has been changed and uh standing up and changing the battery allowed me to gain some perspective on this painting and I followed through with my promise. This is not a perfectly photographic rendition of the model, nor does this really do much justice to the model. I understand that, yes, I'm aware of that. And if you would like to see more realistic paintings, uh, just check out my Instagram. Um, these episodes are meant to help you, to guide you through paintings that you can recreate at home. I think we did all right, um, but I have I have made the neck a little too long, so that was the biggest thing that I saw. That being said, it does help quite a lot to stand back and to take breaks. And if you have you know unlimited time, just take your time with it. I don't have unlimited time, so I have to work as quickly as I can when I can. So. There we go. Now I'll just get the brush for the clothing. Hopefully this is the one, it probably is. And move this up. See how easy it is to move things in Alaprima. I could even move it even higher up if I get a different brush. Now as a consequence, I'm also going to have to move the shoulder, which is all right. So let's go ahead, get the black and white. Move up the shoulder. No big deal. Just a few little brush strokes. Now I'm going to get a clean and dry brush. Reassess this edge here. And just the edge, I'm just making the edge softer. I do not want to create any other value gradations by blending. So right now I'm putting in this plane that I was telling you to be very cautious of, as I will be very cautious of it too. A 
with a young model such as Irene we have to be very cautious with this and she has a slight smile going on there which is what creates this plane it's very tricky And now, going back up here, a little more yellow. Trying to be very cautious with that edge. It's kind of difficult when you have to reach over a camera, but that's okay. There. All right, so now I'm going to sit back again. I'm gonna add a little more definition to the bottom of the nose. Switching brushes here. It's a tiny little sliver of light over here. Nope, nope, you're gonna get the background brush. Push that in a little bit. And I'll get the brush for the hair. Angle that shape a little bit. And then of course the hair still needs to move in here a little bit. Of course, there's more mass to the top here than I described. And now I'm just gonna fill in a little bit more dark. So I'll, I'll go ahead and just pre-mix this right now. So the ivory black, the alizarin permanent, Okay, so just to fill that in and as I said, I'm not going to make this too too realistic. I want this to be something that um, anyone can follow along and draw with. So to that extent, I'll, I guess I'll use that as my excuse um, for not to not to completely render it out. Not, not saying that not everyone can render out a portrait or anything like that. I believe anyone can learn this. I've been asked this a lot. Um, 
here's the way it goes. I believe that anyone can learn how to draw. I believe drawing is a very teachable thing. Okay? And I believe that if you can draw, then you can paint. Therefore, if drawing is something that anyone can learn, and drawing is what enables someone to paint, anyone can paint. It's just portrait is a little complicated. Portrait is one of the more complicated subjects in all of painting. Uh, and that's just because of the very heavy requirement in drawing. So we did draw quite a bit with this, though it's not, you know, perfectly photographic in nature or anything like that. I mean, not even the hair shape is exactly correct just yet, but it's enough. It's enough to satisfy the criteria of being a portrait painting. So remember, you can learn this. Anyone can learn how to draw. And drawing is what you need to learn how to paint. And I don't know if you can hear the noise around my uh, environment, but there's some demolition going on around the area where I live. So earlier I mentioned I don't really have much time, uh, as much time as I would like to do these types of videos since it's they're very audio sensitive. So I'm gonna have to end it pretty soon. few little highlights here and there for the hair. Last little touches here. Just a little glimpse of a curl. Whoops. There goes the autofocus. Just a little glimpse of a curl there. Uh, not much more than that. A good old softening brush, though it does have some paint. Alright, that ought to be about good. That being said, I really hope that this week's episode helps you out. If you would like to see more painting demonstrations such as this one, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you would like to know exactly what materials I'm using and or purchase them, uh, or take a class with me, or see some of my artwork, or port eh, purchase artwork from me, I have links to all of that information in the description box down below. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next episode. And it's now time for our new patron shout out. So thank you, thank you so much, Carolyn Henderson, for becoming a member on my Patreon account. Your support means so much to me. Your support means the world to me. Thank you so much for your support on my Patreon. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next episode.